Jen Schur, pole vault, indoor world record holder and Olympic champion, 2012. Right from the beginning, when you uh, first uh, picked up a pole, how did that happen? You know, I started pole vaulting the senior year of my college, so I played basketball four years. And in the senior year, um, my coach now and my husband talked me into trying pole vault. So it really started late. It started at 22 years old, and that doesn't happen often. How did that conversation go? You know, I'm a, from a three, yeah. I'm a three, <laughs> three shot, yeah, that pole. How did that, what happened there? Yeah, he approached me and asked me, you know, do you want to try pole vault? And I've seen it, and I was a track and field athlete, but not pole vault. So, you know, it's something that I saw people doing, and I was like, they're crazy. You know, that's really dangerous and scary. And so when he approached me, I was like, no, there's no way. And, you know, I always thought the build of a pole vaulter was a very gymnastics, like, short, you know, powerful and that was not my style so you know I didn't think it was for me but then he asked me again and I was like all right you know maybe I'll try it and it was one of those things that I tried and I fell in love with. What was it uh, has he explained to you now since then what was it he saw in you either physically or psychologically that made him think uh, you know you could make a good pole vaulter? You know, when you ask him now, he sees, you know, that I was pretty tough on the basketball court, that I was fast, that I was tall, and, you know, he thought he could work with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really is what he does coaching, too. And he knew he had confidence in his coaching and his style and how he coached pole vault that he could really mold me into a good pole vaulter. With your physique and your height, etc., with the other ladies on the circuit, uh, how tall are you and are you much taller than the other ladies in the circuit? I'm about six feet tall, and yes, I am taller than the other athletes, but I see a fluctuation now where the athletes are getting a little taller. And, you know, so, but you have Svetlana Fiofanova, who's, you know, about five foot three. So pole vaulters can range all shapes and sizes. So we uh, picked up the pole, we've fallen in love with it, uh, and we're off. And um, your early uh, successes, were they a shock to you? Yes, you know, I think I was pretty much training and competing like a robot where I didn't know the importance of what I was doing or the importance of, you know, winning a U.S. championship. I didn't understand that at the time. And then through years, I look back and I'm like, that was pretty incredible. But, you know, to go to Beijing four years into my career and win a silver, that's, I mean, I don't know how I did it. And, you know, it was really two people, my husband and I working at it that accomplished it. But you know, I try not to think about it too much. When you look at the US Championships and the incredible um, achievement you've had there, I mean, am I right in saying that you've never left a US Championships with any colour other than gold? Is that? Uh, unfortunately, yes, I've left with uh, silver and a bronze before too. So, <laughs> yes, but, um, you know, it's been a good track record there. And, you know, it's an important meet for us. And most of the time it is a qualifying meet. So we're really prepared going into it. I'm ready to go. And, you know, I think you have to get past that stage in order to look ahead. So, you know, that is my most important meet leading up to the season. Was there a particular moment or, uh, that you can remember when you sort of, realized either looked through the mirror or just realized oh my goodness i am an international name or star now was this did something happened that whether it be magazines or internet or radio we thought my goodness people actually might know me yes um it was actually it was pretty early it was when i went to europe for the first time we went to lignano italy and they had the results in the paper and they mentioned my name like in a sentence and i couldn't read it i just saw my name and i was like Wow, I remember the day that I couldn't wait to see it in like the USA Today or something, and here it is in an international paper. So that was pretty neat. Like I kept that paper to this day; I still have it. And you know, my first trip to Europe, that was an experience, and seeing it and watching the crowd, and you know, people asking for my autograph. I'm like, how do they even know? So you know, but it's built up from there, and you know, the appreciation I have for the fans over here, and to come over here and compete. You know, I it's dear to my heart. Do you have a goal to uh, dominate or to have the title of the queen of pole vault? Is that one of your things you want the pole vault to be yours? You know, that's a good question. No, I really think the way that I look at pole vault is, you know, there are 12 athletes in the meet and everyone's competing for gold and the respect is given to every single one of those athletes. And, you know, I really don't like the title of queen or anything like that. It's just, it doesn't sound right to me. It is, I mean, just a bunch of, you know, female athletes competing as hard as they can and with dreams and goals. So, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, I want to win at the meet, but I don't really like that title. <laughs> it's... It's a little too much for me. 
how important would it be to add the IAAF World Championship title to that title? It's very important, the World Championships, you know, to have come to the Olympics in 08 and 2012 and walk away with a silver and a gold. You know, the World Championships, I just haven't had, you know, fortunate luck there, the same that I have with the Olympics. And, you know, this one I plan on going in healthy, and that's been the issue is it seems like every World Championships I've been injured. So I plan on going this one healthy and fit. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. If a young girl came up to you, 12 years old, and she was really considering taking up the pole vault, what would you say to her as a reason why she should do the event? You know, I think she should do it or try it just because, you know, for me, I was not even going to try it. I was scared of it. It was something I didn't want to participate in. So you don't really know what you can fall into, what you're good at until you try it. And you know, that's kind of the lesson that I try to teach to children. You know, it might not be pole vault. It could be long jump. It could be something else, but you need to try it, even though you might be a little afraid, you know, just try it once and then you'll know. What pulled you through when you had your dark moments? You know, I really think it's your support system around you and it's, you know, my coach who is also my husband. He was really there for me when times got tough and my family. And you know, going into the Olympics, it was very much, um, everyone was Olympic fever. They wanted to talk the Olympics, whereas an athlete, you're trying to forget. Like, you just want to train and go on. So, you know, my family and, you know, my husband were really good about keeping my mind off of it. You know, focus on animals, my pets, you know, so they were very good at that and, you know, in those dark times, it's really your support system around you. What pets do you have? I have a dog and a cat. <laughs> I hope to add more soon. Names? <laughs> Tundra and Morris. Tundra is a big white Great Pyrenees, and Morris is an orange tabby cat. Um, so you have your support network that uh, gets you through those dark days. Again, if there was a, a young girl coming up to you and said she's going through a particularly tough time in something, mm -hmm. and she said, you know, you, she could ask you for some advice in terms of maybe her support network isn't as you know as great as the one that you've had. Um, you could ask for some advice on what she could do, how she could think, or what she could do to get through her tough times. What advice would you give? You know, that's a good question. I think tough times. You know, it comes in all different ways. You know, it can be personal, it can be sports, it can be physical. And it's really knowing that it's not going to last. You know, tomorrow's a new day. And, you know, I think that's one thing, you know, that helps me through it looking ahead and, you know, really kind of tackling it head on. How can I solve this? What can I do about this? And the more you do that, you know, the more it helps pull you through. So, you know, my advice definitely would be, you know, you got to look ahead, you got to look to the future and, you know, do what you can in the meantime, because it is going to pass. Um, and, you know, arriving in Moscow uh, on that podium, gold around your neck, and they say, you know, Olympic champion, world champion, what would that feeling be like? You know, I think it would be a feeling, you know, of accomplishment. You know, it's just another title that I would like to have Olympic champion you know they never can take that away from me but to add another title you're always looking you know to really put an addition to. Are records in discussions at all in, in team sir? You know they they are in discussion and records come I think when you're not chasing them as much and that's an example I had in indoor is you know I I wasn't chasing but I had it in my mind and it came and it was pretty natural it wasn't you know, I wasn't trying too hard. So I think they come when you're not that focused on them. So I think, you know, going into these meets, I'm going to, you know, enjoy the competition, enjoy international competition, and really try to hit the technique that I need to hit when I'm in Moscow. Tensha, thank you for talking to yes. IAAF. Thank you.